Hey, so lots of news has went on, let's just get to it. And the first story is BlizzCon's back for 2023. This is not really a surprise though, um, I sort of assumed that it would. Uh, of course, by November 2023, they will have shipped Overwatch 2, Dragonflight, and five patches, uh, then Diablo 4. So at that point, all eyes are going to be on the survival game, which I would say will likely get some form of update, right? Because that would be Blizzard's kind of like natural next, uh, I guess, thing to talk about if they want like a, a good story in terms of product. Now, per Mikey Barra's post, that game's team has actually doubled this year as well and is continuing to, uh, to be hired up, which does make sense. Now, for the rest of Mike's sort of recap end of year blue post, uh, pretty simple, really, just a recap of progress, talking about leadership reshuffles, ongoing commitments, that kind of thing. Um, not much. What I'll say, though, is for there being BlizzCon, having an actual panel for World of Warcraft versus those overproduced segments that we had for past things, that would be really nice. And, uh, of course, do expect the next expansion to be announced at that BlizzCon, um, as well as, I suppose, the final patches for this one. Next, then, let's dive into a fun story that's been developing, which is the fun little subplot about Shadreen that has been developing. Now, Shadreen is the mysterious ethereal who has been watching us for years in various strange places. Um, now, those of us who have been scrolling through our adventure journals have noticed increasingly larger amounts of gold being slipped into the journals by someone. Uh, this week, you'll actually get a shadow scrolled coin worth 100 gold, which is nice, but more importantly, here's the flavor text. The coin has an otherworldly feel to it. Its face is creased with dark purple and blue lines of magical energy. So, that all does feel kind of voidy. But what is a bit more telling then is the accompanying letter. Thank you for the opportunity to observe you. The information I've gathered has been illuminating to say the least. This will be my final gift for now. So, I think this is clear as day. Uh, Shadreen and her agents, they've been watching us for ages. We actually made a video about this two and a half years ago, I would say, so I, it's definitely worth checking out. But they've been observing us in the Brawler's Guild to learn our fighting style, in the Trial of Style to learn how we dress, and even in the Void Elf uh, Home Rift, where she can actually be spotted. And further to that, some non-Void Ethereals have been like just buying very powerful items uh, from us for a long time, even being in Nazoth's dark future of Azeroth to buy artifacts from that, which is weird. So overall then, if somebody's been slipping this stuff into our adventure journal, and I suppose canonically we've not noticed, and also Shadreen's people have been studying our style of fighting and how we dress, then I'd say maybe we have an impersonator, maybe there's a spy. I think that's kind of fun. So this could be related to, you know, Void or Old Gods. May not just be that though, because, um, well, there is more. In the Trial of Style, we hear Shadreen saying, You have done well. My master shall be pleased uh, to see this. Now, we actually don't know who that master is. And even though, yeah, Void Ethereals are about here, and that is suspicious, take a character like Locust Walker, who is a Void Ethereal, but is not overtly evil. Who knows? Um, we have no idea where it will go, but obviously Blizzard didn't want to just let this storyline be completely forgotten about, so they just told it in the UI in a way that was actually really neat, so fair play for that one. Okay, next story, going back to the game then, and that is that the embodiment of the Storm Eater Mount appearance is, uh, well, collectible from, uh, from not only just Mythic, because it was thought to be a Mythic-only drop, right? Uh, but no, it's been seen drop in normal mode. WoW had actually picked up on a run that yielded two drops for it. Now, normally the big sort of raid things, you know, there's like a mythic only mount that's got a 100% drop chance of one mount. Uh, so this does appear to be differently uh, dropping, right? And it's definitely different from the norm, but given how this is a dragon riding expansion, um, I'm actually happy enough to see this be a lot more widely available. Now, sure, it won't be as prestigious, therefore, as the Gladiator Drake transformation, but, ah, oh well, I think it's cool. Um, hey, it's it's just nice stuff for people to actually shoot for, uh, shoot for in the game. Maybe it'll drive more people towards a raid. I see that all as a good thing. The next thing then is class changes. 10.0.5 had a massive wave of them covering Druids, Preservation, Evoker, MM, Mistweaver, Holy Paladin, Priest, uh, Warlock, and uh, Warrior. And honestly, it would take too long to recap it all here. That's not really the story. The actual story here is that this is not what we're used to from them. 
Uh, this is very much unlike BFA or Shadowlands, where they were very slow on feedback. I mean, even a fun example, Matt was complaining about a lack of there being an AoE rage dump for Guardian, but then lo and behold, these class changes actually include that. Of course, broadly speaking, there's been a lot of suspicion, and to get through that, the one thing that you need to see is where it's be backed up by action. And here we are seeing their claim that they would continue to actively iterate on classes over the expansion actually be backed up by proof, which is really good. Mythic Plus, then. Um, right, okay, number one, this is a rough week for healers, so cool affixes, perfect system. <laughs> but as well, they're harder this time around, and now part of that was expected, given the steeper scaling and Mythic Plus 11 and beyond, but, uh, well, a lot of people are just finding the dungeons themselves to be too hard. And to put it briefly, 7 out of 8 of the dungeons have seen targeted nerfs to particular bosses and trash. Now, I won't go through all of them, but usually it's like nerfs that are 20 to 40% when it comes to health or ability damage. Uh, quite a few things have had their cast times be a bit longer. Lots of changes like that. Uh, likely more to come. It's actually not wholly unlike Shadowlands, which saw a lot of dungeon nerfs early on too. So, plenty of that. Also, loads of nerfs to Mythic Razageth. It had like multiple nerfs. I mean, even 50% nerfs to some things during the Race to World First progress, which is kind of spicy. I guess like she wasn't tested to preserve the surprise, so that's kind of showing in the tuning. Um, as of the time of me recording, I think Echo are at like 20%. Uh, Liquid are a bit behind them, but do seem to have a higher pool count. So we'll see what's going on with that. Next then, Transmog News, which actually is pretty damn good this time around. So beyond all the trading post items, there's actually a lot being added to the Trial of Style for this year. We've got more belts and boots being added for some past tier sets that didn't have them, a whole bunch of past expansion weapons, and then a whole bunch of Kaltiran beanies and pirate hats, which is, hey, pretty nice. I'm good that that feature is, is, is being added to, I suppose. Now, there are some other items that have been data mined. We're not exactly sure where they come from. Uh, we've got a, hey, do you want some plain looking chainmail? You can get that. I like the more low key options. Um, I think there's some low key cloth as well. Uh, chainmail bikinis, which make a lot of people happy. A bunch of Legion dungeon and raid set recolors that weren't previously obtainable. And a bunch of other odds and ends. There's these nice Anduin looking hoods and Necker chiefs, I think they're called, which uh, actually look really neat. Loads of color options being data mined, so those would be great for transmog. On the whole, then, basically, yeah, good shit. Solo Shuffle. Blizzard have announced some changes to this one. Uh, the end of season title Crimson Soloist has been replaced with the title Crimson Legend, and additionally, a new seasonal title will be added that requires players to win 100 rounds of uh, Shuffle above a 2400 rating. Um, that's just so that during the season people can get a cool title to reflect that they've done that without necessarily being somebody who's in the top 0.1%. UI improvements are also coming, such as a warning prompt for levers, uh, mouse over stuff in the queue time, uh, an indicator for a call to arms for like healers and you know that, that sort of thing. Um, that's all in the works. They actually do want to incentivize the likes of healers more because right now the queues are really rough for DPS because I mean, I have a few things. One of them is a bug being fixed. Um, and then also there are just large problems in like there's loads of DPS who want to do this and uh, you know, not as many healers that can be really annoying for the queues. Unfortunately, I've not got into this yet. I really should because, uh, well, disc PvP sounds very fun. I will say a few of the people on our team have been having an absolute blast with the solo shuffle. So it seems like solo shuffle by breaking up, like, say, say take a meta build that, I don't know, has existed in the past, like Rogue Mage uh, Priest. You can't really do that in solo shuffle. It breaks all that stuff up. So one of the aspects of being able to do decently in Arena, of course, was like building a comp with people, which meant finding, you know, all the people, that sort of thing. Whereas in Solo Shuffle, I suppose it's just, it's more churned up, kind of shatters out those uh, those meta builds, and maybe that just makes it a more approachable, uh, yeah, just a more approachable situation that kind of leans on your personal gameplay skill rather than as much of the coordination stuff, which could be seen as a little bit of a barrier to entry. On the whole, I think uh, really good, and it's definitely one of the things that I want to hop into. Money! Yes, right, money then. So there's a fairly chunky sale on. At the same time, there's also a new bundle that contains a new transmog that 
I mean, yeah, it does look really nice. It's kind of what we expect. Can be purchased uh, separately. Um, one of the, I suppose, decent things about that transmog is uh, there are multiple different um, versions of some of its uh, items, so you get options, uh, I suppose. Also, character services are discounted as well, which uh, probably means if you've been waiting for some of those, now's the time. And uh, to cue a small drama, Materials Charger is back, I believe, till January which is interesting. Uh, that was actually only available during World of Warcraft's 2012 annual pass system that also got you a copy of Diablo 3. Uh, that's how I have the mount. Um, do I mind that people can get it now? Uh, no, not really, to be honest. Now, the game also does have two promotions. There's a 30 days of free game time uh, coming with Dragonflight, which is quite wild, and also a free Evoker trial up to level 63. Which does show us that they really do seem to be feeling the need to bump up those player numbers, and I guess that's something that we should, uh, yeah, talk about later. So that's all the other news that's basically went down. You can expect patch 10.0.5, I would say, before January 20th. Seems like that's bringing in the new Trial of Style roster stuff, a whole bunch of these transmogs, and, uh, yeah, the class changes, all of that stuff. What I'll say, because this is one of the last sort of videos of the year, um, to kind of like recap my experience thus far, especially season one has happened, we've been having an absolute blast. I mean, the new raid, I think, is uh, honestly just, uh, just fantastic. Um, I'm really noticing what the creator of DBM said about Blizzard's just like design language being way, way, way more clear this time around. It really is. You don't feel like you've got to rely on boss timers and that thing, that sort of thing quite as, uh, quite as much. Um, I don't know, it's just like mechanics feel quite tactile and uh, and intuitive. That's probably the way that I would put it. So the way that we've been doing things is just uh, like, yeah, like normal mode. We're seven out of eight. Uh, now we've only done two raids and it will be heroic time in the new year. Um, we always go in these like launch periods, very, very casual um, because it's like in around Christmas and people are busy and uh, then we'll bump it up to Heroic in the new year. But it has been really, really fun. Our raid nights have been just fantastic. Um, I mean, I, I thought that Sepulcher was a really good raid, actually. Um, I think Sanctum was a was a miss. Uh, but Sepulcher, I, I really enjoyed. It obviously did have some of its tuning-related issues. This time around, not exactly feeling that. Um, yeah, no, the bosses, like, they, they feel... The bosses feel very diversified from each other, right? Like, there's not stuff that's samey. Um, I mean, there are some bosses that are a bit more simple, like Taros, I suppose, which could just be an opportunity to go and get some parses. But I'm really not feeling like uh, there's padding or filler. So, like, sure, it's an eight-boss raid, which is two smaller than ten, which is what we've you know, sometimes got before. But uh, they, they feel like all really good bosses. I'm, I'm just really liking the raid. And even the trash feels pretty reasonable, too. I mean, yeah, it's wild, actually. People are just having a great time. Perhaps the only group that maybe is, you know, where things are a little bit more rumbly is Mythic Plus, and they are overtly, uh, not overtly, probably the way to put it, they're like immediately a little bit less rewarding because of the retuning of the difficulty curve, and then, of course, teething issues with the new dungeon pool. That is kind of unfortunate, uh, certainly for the raid perspective. We're all feeling quite great about things, and that's also happening at a time where the rest of the expansion is just working really well for people. So it's one of those things where I think for the people who have came back and are kind of willing to, uh, you know, give it a shot, I think this is, for many of us, turning into the most enjoyable uh, time we've had in WoW since, like, Legion. For me, it certainly is the most that I've enjoyed the game uh, since Legion, like, easily, honestly. And, and to be honest, actually, th this time it is... This is far more preferable to Legion to me in many different ways. Um, I thought artifacts were a cool fantasy, but a pretty lackluster system uh, from like the sort of game design fundamentals uh, perspective. Um, I didn't, yeah, I, I thought they had issues. And I talked about that all the way back, of course, in Legion. Um, but you know, all those teething issues we had with Legion, because people generally remember Legion as they last played it whenever it was mad. But man, the, the, the you know, the legendary acquisition and, uh, well, the weird thing, it was more alt-friendly than it was, like, multiple spec-friendly, which was really bizarre. Uh, but all of that stuff that felt really bad at the start of Legion, it's like, we don't have any of those downsides. It's just a, a bunch of content, right? Like, I've, I still have so many of the side quests to do, which, you know, I do want to do, of course, because I want to get that renown, um, unlock more of the storylines and that sort of thing. But it just does feel like there's a hell of a lot, and uh, I will not in any way be done 
by the time the trading post comes out and you know 10.0.5 is out very shortly after that there'll be a ptr for uh, 10.0.7 which of course is going to include a bunch of other stuff yeah i mean shit feels pretty good okay so that's it for the wow news that's your update uh, let me know what you think and i guess um let me know what the uh, what your experience has been, what it's been like for your guild. One of the things I'm trying to get to to grips with is, you know, I do think that WoW is a smaller game now than it has been in quite some time because a lot of people were following it even just for like the, you know the hate watching and kind of watching it burn thing during Shadowlands. But now that the game's like out and it's just good, well, it's no longer enjoyable for those people to kind of like hate watch it because there's nothing like there's just nothing really you know, good for them to be very dramatic about. So I think that's meant that we're kind of left with the players who either were willing to give it a chance or stuck with the game. And I think we're realizing that that's a pretty small cohort of people. And I'll dive into this later. Um, but certainly it's a really good time for those of us who are in the game. It's just going to take Blizzard some time, I think, to build that audience back up. And they're just gonna have to do that by, you know, the, the proof being in the pudding. Hopefully it will be. Okay, that's it for me. Have a great time. I'll see you later.